Hi everyone, welcome to part three of the grandfather clock tutorial. In the last chapter we built the middle section and the doors, so today we're going to concentrate on the pendulum. I've put a mark there and the whole width of that top there is 35 mil, so my mark is at 17 and a half mil across and we want the hole sort of to the back of the grandfather clock. If it was in the middle there, it would almost um, be sticking out beyond this bit. So we want it towards the back and that came out at seven mil. So um, do what looks right for you, but I found that halfway across and seven mil in was, was a good depth when you're looking at it from this point of view. So let's go over to my jewelry bench now and I'll show you how I drill the holes um, and make the metal version of the pendulum. Okay, so we're here at the jewellery bench. This sort of strobing light effect is this lamp here. It's an LED one, but it's my best work lamp for here. So we'll have to put up with that. And the first thing we're going to do is drill the hole that we marked out. And I've got a pendant drill for that. So I don't know if you can see that there, it's a motor up there and then it has a shaft and a drill attachment on the end and it has a foot pedal so it's very much like uh, the dentist would use and it probably sounds like that as well so I apologize for that so hopefully you can see this um, we're going to be drilling into where we made the mark on there I use a very fine drill at first and then we'll use a bigger drill piece, drill bit, sorry. So I just need to position myself, got my hair tied back, health and safety, and uh, wear goggles as well. Just in the case the drill bits break. So that's a tiny, tiny hole at first, and then I'll just change the bit out and make put a larger drill bit in. We're only going to put some copper wire in, um, so it doesn't need to be massive. And once you've got the pilot hole, it's easier to use the larger drill bit. So that's all we need to do for that. You can use uh, handheld drills. You probably could use a bradle if you've got one. No one's gonna see this hole, so it doesn't need to be the prettiest of holes. So what I made for this one was the copper dome. Uh, I don't know if I can just tilt that so you can actually see the dome there. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. This is kind of over the top though, so what I've got here is a punch and it will punch out all these different sized discs and it's on a rubber base and it will make a noise. So I've got a sheet of copper here and we'll just pick the size punch that we want to do and we put that in, I take those ones out so it can get in closer and we put that down and we'll get a big hammer and this will make a noise can you see that there you can hear it go through and you can just knock it through like that and all the other ones come out and there is our disc so the next thing we do is I've got a doming block 
which has lovely smooth dome shapes all around it of different sizes and then I'll show you over here I have all of these punches here so they correspond to the sizes in here so here's a punch and it fits perfectly into one of these if I was making jewelry I would start with a very big hole and gradually sort of go down the sizes but this is going to be um, just for the clock so it doesn't need to be too refined literally put the copper in that hole take this on there actually it's loud enough as it is right and just give it a good whack and you can hear the difference when it's gone through and there we have a lovely dome shape I don't know if you can see that there we go and that's all we need to do for that So the next thing I do is I've got some copper wire. This is about one and a half mil thick. And it, you, uh, let's see what, you can kind of just estimate the first cut. It's just as long as it's long enough for that. straighten it out a bit and what I did do for that one was I soldered this copper disc onto the copper wire and then I put the top through the hole and bent it over so if I get one of my soldering blocks and my flux and a paintbrush and it's completely over the top I use silver solder for this which looks like that you could use a soldering iron I just this is what I have so uh, this is how I did it and this will get hot so use some tweezers to hold it in position they're going on the side there we go most of soldering is about propping things up this is just flux liquid flux so I'll put that on the wire I'll put that on here again if I was being super super diligent I would actually file a groove there to fit around that wire flux my solder put that on there delicate balancing act trying to balance the solder actually on the wire it's probably the long-windedest most frustrating part of all of this and then we heat it up I'm going to turn the light off because I can see when it changes colour and you heat it till it glows a nice cherry red and it will melt the solder underneath And where it touches, 
it will glue it onto the wire. And that hasn't, oh there it is. I'll do it this way up then. There we go. Soldering is 95% practice and luck. <laughs> so there we go. It looks an awful colour now. I have what's called a pickle bath. I would dip that in it and it would take all the fire scale off and it makes it um, back to copper and then I would burnish that. But that's how I made the pendant. I'll let that cool down a little bit and then I'll come back and show you how I put it into the clock case. Okay, so I've just polished it a little bit and this is the simplest way. We're putting the wire in through the hole that we drilled. And then you can think, oh, how far down do you want this to come? And then snip it, not at the t exactly there, a little bit up, so that gives us enough room to create a loop. And then we want to get our round nosed pliers and simply see if I can get that so you can see it. Bend it over. All we're doing is stopping the wire the wire going back down through the hole. That's bent slightly, so we'll straighten that up. It's very soft, the wire, at the minute, because when we solder it and heating it up gets it soft again. So I, you could hammer it, work hard on it to hammer it, but um, so I'm not that bothered at the minute. So, and then just adjust it forward if it's too far back. Tweak it a little bit until it sort of hangs in a way that pleases you. Can you see that? And then it does move. It will twiddle around. You can make the top a little bit more complicated. I put a wire under there and then did this onto the wire under there. But for the sake of just sitting in a doll's house, I think that's good enough, especially when you're not going to be moving it once it's in place. Um, you could glue it in place, but have a have a play with it and get it into a position that, that looks good to you. And then just there we go. I covered that bit. I just cut some craft board for this one to fit, to cover that join at the top, but you don't have to do that because this way around you don't actually see it. We don't, what we want to make sure though is that it doesn't stick too far forward so that when we open and shut the door, it doesn't bang on the glass. So that is the more complicated metalwork version. We'll go back over to the other bench now and I will show you how to do the easy one with the print file. Okay, so if you don't want to or can't make the metal version, what we're going to do to do next is print off the grandfather clock printables 
file and you'll see that there's several clock faces on there both with and without hands for the squares and the arched um, shaped clock faces but also there's some domes at the bottom so select the domed effect pendulum to the size that you've won and I think for me it's the middle one and you could print and cut this file but you might not want to pr print and cut every single clock face so what I do is I print it on copy paper first and then find out the ones that the sizes of the shapes that I want and you can enlarge them within the um, file anyway to get the exact right one for your build um, but if you're doing 24 scale or 6 scale you know you'd need to really print it off and work out the dimensions and the only reason I can't sort of get this exactly right for you is every printer has its own margin settings so do print it out on copy paper first and they're pretty simple shapes to cut by hand but if you want to do print and cut do that and what I did was I've cut mine out and I've stuck it onto some black craft board and the reason for that is when I cut it out I don't want to have the white edge if, if it was on white craft board so that's why I've done it onto black craft board so I'm going to cut it out roughly first and then go round it a bit more neatly and again you could do it you could use the Cricut to cut a circle of the same dimensions on the craft board if you wanted to get it perfect but that's good enough for me and then you can see you see you can't see white edges so much and you could always go around with a black sharpie as well on the copy paper so a good old cocktail stick and depending, some pendulums sort of have a bit sticking out the bottom or you can't see them. So whichever version of that you'd like, but it's quite handy to keep the pointed end at the top because that naturally will fit into the hole that we've drilled and we can glue it in there. This is going to be a fixed pendulum. You could, if you've got a very fine drill bit, drill a hole in the top of your cocktail stick and wire it like we did for the metal version of the pendulum and equally if you've got some copper wire you could glue this paper version onto the copper wire or whatever colour wire you've got and put it through the top and use a loop to secure it so whatever you've got but if you've only got paper and cocktail stick we're going to do that so I'm going to glue that fixed in there on this one so I would think that I want my pendulum to end about there so I'll just mark that with a pencil and then you've seen me use these before miter shears they're very handy just for taking the end off if you did want to have the end sticking out get some sandpaper and you could shape the end but I'm going to stick this over the end so again get some tacky glue super glue I might use super glue on this one because it's quicker I just put some on the end Ooh, it doesn't want to move hang on I haven't used it in so long the ends dried up go just a little bit and then put it down onto the dome and wait for it to quickly grab there we go so that is one dome and of course you could paint the cocktail stick as well if you've got a brass or copper coloured paint and that would stick in there and you could glue it 
happens just not quite the right way around there. A little slightly off. But there you go. And that's quite an effective faux pendulum. So if you're happy that this was the colour that you wanted your clock now and you were happy that the pendulum was fixed in a position that you liked, you could go and glue on your front and if you were opting for the fixed door, you could also glue that in place now. And it's amazing, isn't it? It just looks quite realistic. If not, I would suggest not gluing the pendulum in place or if you're going for the um, metal version, don't fix that yet. If you want to paint your clock a different colour or if you're going for the wood version and you want to stain it, I would suggest hold off on putting the door on yet until we've built the face and the clocks around that you want and we'll do the hinges at the very end. So that's up to you. Join me next time and we'll be making the square face first and then we'll do the most complicated but the most, I think, beautiful one, the scroll top. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.